Today we're going to talk about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. I admit, it is an absolutely horrible name, and it looks way more confusing than it really is. So before we get started, I just want to point out that all the files that we're using in this, these uh, HR diagrams, uh, can be found at this uh, address right here. So if you go there, you're going to have uh, everything that you need to print out your own and, uh, and, and rock on. Okay, so this is a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and it's on a, a special kind of graph paper called a logarithm paper, and um, it can be a little confusing because it's not something that we've ever done before. Before we get too far talking about the type of graph paper and how to use it, let's just take a look at our axis. Anytime we're looking at a graph, we always want to look at the axis first. So we see that we have magnitude and surface temperature are the two things that we have on our axis. Now surface temperature, um, that's, that's pretty obvious, but I want you to notice one thing. It's temperature is in Kelvin, and we've probably never done anything with Kelvin before. So here's just a little uh, image to kind of help you understand what Kelvin is. Kelvin is very similar to Celsius. They have the same scales. Zero degrees Celsius is 273 degrees Kelvin. So if you take and you subtract 273 from the Celsius number, you'd have the Kelvin. But really, it doesn't really matter um, to you for in, in the purposes of doing this graphing. Just know that Kelvin is a temperature that we use um, in, in science a whole lot. Magnitude is not a word that we've used a lot. Magnitude means brightness. How bright is the star? Okay, so we're going to be graphing how bright is the star on the y-axis compared to how hot is the star on this x-axis. Let's look at each axis a bit closer. So down here we have surface temperature, one of the weird springs. And if I ever uh, were to meet Hertzsprung or Russell, uh, the guys who invented this, my first question would be, why did you do this? Zero is on the right, and it goes up as you go to the left. All right? That always confuses students. So if you need to, if, it, if it's easier for you, then go through and just label them. One, two, three, four. But just know that it's going backwards from any other graph that you've ever done before. Also notice on here that the surface temperature is in thousands of degrees. So this is really 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So as you're moving to the left, you're increasing degrees by thousands. If we look at this axis, we have magnitude. Okay, So you're going to notice that the spacing in between each one gets shorter and shorter. So the way that that works is this is point 1, this would be point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, all the way up until we get to 1. Now, it would look like this if you were able to, to, to label it, but the spaces get so small that that's really difficult to do. So you're just going to have to be able to do that in your head and count. So point 1, point 2, point 3, all the way up to point 9, then we get to 1. Then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then they start counting by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it goes on and on from there. Okay, on our HR diagram, we're going to be graphing or plotting the location uh, of these stars, so their magnitude versus their temperature. One of the other things that we're going to do when we plot them is we're going to plot them by their color. So the temperature of a star, the surface temperature of a star, determines what color it is. So we can tell how hot a star is when we look at it in the night sky by what color it is. So if we look at Betelgeuse, it has a surface temperature of 3,100. And if I look over here on this star color key, I see that 3,100 is red. So when I plot it, I'm going to color it red. So its color is red. Polaris, 5,400. So it's going to be here in the yellow range. All right. One of the things that students always ask me as we're doing this assignment is, I don't have a yellow-white uh, marker. I don't have a blue-white marker. Do the best that you can. If you don't have a blue-white, use blue. Obviously, we don't have a yellow-white, use yellow. For white, I always just draw a little circle right, and let that represent white. Don't get too hung up on having the exact colors. Just do the best you can to get the general idea. So if we keep filling this out, we'll have all the colors that go uh, with these different stars. All right, let's try plotting one of these stars. Let's uh, take a look at Regulus. Okay, so we see that it's going to be a blue-white star. 
has a magnitude of 160 and a surface temperature of 13,600. 13, I find the easiest thing to do is to get a ruler um, and that I can lay down on the chart. Now I'm going to tell you the number one mistake that students make is that they switch the magnitude and the surface temperature when they're plotting. So be very careful that you, when you're plotting the temperature, you're plotting the temperature. When you're plotting magnitude, you're plotting the magnitude and you don't get those mixed up. So we're going to look at finding a surface temperature of 13,600. So we know that this is 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, this is 13,000 right here, and this is 14,000. 13,600 is in between 13,000 and 14,000. So I'm going to put my ruler on that spot so that I'll mark it for me. So here's my ruler. Now I know its magnitude is 160. So is 160 in between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1? No, so it doesn't go in there. Is 160 between 0 0.1 and 1? No, so it doesn't go in there. One in between, 160 in between 1 and 10? Nope. 10 and 100? Nope. Is 160 in between 100 and 1,000? Yes, it is. So this is 100. This would be 200, this line right here. So 160 is going to be right in between those. So there's that line. Now at this spot, I'm going to put a dot that is blue-white. So it should look like this. And so we're going to continue doing that until we fill our chart with all of the stars that we have to plot. OK, let's try plotting one more star, this time one that isn't on your worksheet. Beta Pictoris has a magnitude of 20 and a temperature of 8,600. So 8,600, there's 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. So we know it's going to be in between 8 and 9,000. So we put down our line. A magnitude of 20. So 20 between 1 and 10? Nope. Between 10 and 100? Yes, it is. Each one of these lines is now worth 10. 10, 20. So it's going to be right on that line. So where those cross? we're going to put our dot and then we're going to label it as beta pictoris. Every time you put a mark on your chart, make sure that you label it.